All right, boys, so we now have the long-awaited gold caster video. Not as long and awaited as the rider video, I assure you, because I really put off that rider video for, you know, half a millennia, basically. But I was like, let me make sure I don't space these videos out too long so then we actually have the meme of, you know, waiting for this video to come out infinitely. But you guys know the drill if you've seen some of the other tier lists. Essentially, we're looking at all of the gold rarity casters and we're going to be putting them in a tier list, talking about how good they are, etc, etc. You guys know that... All of the servants here are going to be looked at NP1 and no free to play servants are actually on this list because I did a dedicated free to play servant video. So if you want to see that, you can go check out the free to play tier list. But before we begin, today's video is actually sponsored by Baiyi, which basically what this website is, is it's essentially a website that you can use to buy Japanese products, which if you are any type of anime fan, you have to know that there are so many times where Japanese products get released over in Japan and they never come to the West. And this is one of those ways that you can actually gain access to some exclusive figures or, you know, cards for certain games that you want. And I'm not just talking about like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They actually print out cards for FGO Arcade when like you buy, like get a servant in those games and you can't get those over here in the West, but you can get those through websites like this where they actually sell the Japanese products. And they're actually giving me a special deal for you guys that if you sign up with the link down in the description down below, they will give you 2,000 yen to your account. So that actually helps you out in buying some of these products. And I just thought it was a really cool deal because there's been many times where I've wanted to buy figures uh, that are like exclusive to Japan, especially because you guys know that uh, if you come out to some of the streams, I really like Dokkan and Dokkan actually releases exclusive figures for their anniversaries. And like half the time they never come out to the West and they're pretty dope and sick. So this is a really cool way to actually gain access to that. And they are sponsoring the channel for today's video. So go ahead and sign up using my link down in the description down below and they will give you 2000 yen free for just making your account. But we can get back into the tier list. You know, all the usual plugs also in the description down below as well, like the Twitch if you wanna see that. I stream every weekday, click the join button to become a channel member, get channel member exclusive content. I'm actually working on the Benny Enma challenge quest video for channel members exclusively. So I got all that, you know, affiliated by all means with LD emulator and all that good stuff in the description down below as well. But let's go ahead and just dive right into the tier list and let's just knock out some of the obvious ones right here. Obviously, all of the support casters are absolute godly S tier servants. I don't really need to talk about why these servants are in S tier. Like these servants are the servants that facilitate your gameplay in FGO. Without them, we would not have as easy or as comfortable of a time in the game. I mean, you guys, if you've been playing since year one, you guys kind of know that year one was a dark time, man. It was either like you had waiver or you absolutely struggled in the game. It's kind of like that right now with Scotty, but at least now it's like, okay, you can have like a friend Scotty and maybe your waiver and there's actually just more servants as well that you could use like Paracelsus or Asclepius. Like you can kind of get around it now, but year ones were dark times. I was like, it was like you either had waiver or you didn't. So you got to know that all of these servants are in S tier because Essentially, they facilitate all of the gameplay for FGO. The only one that people maybe might question a little bit is Tamamo, but Tamamo is absolutely cracked beyond belief. She definitely deserves to be up here with her still doing all the necessary things that a support type servant should be doing with her giving, you know, a card buff for 50% for three turns. The fact that she lowers skill cooldown on her NP, charges the entire party's NP, has kind of like a healing gimmick between her third skill and her NP. The fact that she has pretty decent defense to keep herself around and the fact that she gives an absolutely just massive NP damage buff to the entire, well, not the entire party, but pretty much everybody that matters because she doesn't give it to herself, but she has a non-damaging NP. So I'm going to say the entire party. She gives a 30% NP damage buff to the entire party, basically. It makes her absolutely crazy. And the people forget... That waiver over here is still giving like generic good stuff that's good in like any team comp. I mean, he gives 50% to one person, 20% to the entire party, gives 30% defense plus damage cut, gives a 30% attack buff that people forget about. They think it's 20%, but it's actually 30%. It's why you actually get a lot of damage when you do use waiver because he gives a very, very strong charisma because then he also gives like the special little damage mod on top of that. And then he gives a 50% crit buff for three turns. And on top of all of that, 
His NP is absolutely cracked, with it having the 50% stun chance at base overcharge, lowers all enemies defense, and reduces their charge by one, and then if you really care about it, he has the curse meme for little bits of chip damage. So these two definitely do deserve to be up here, they are absolutely cracked supports, they're just kind of overshadowed by some of the new wave people like Merlin, Scotty, uh, Castoria and Koyanskaya, they do kind of overshadow them just a bit, but they're not bad by any stretch of the imagination. So now we can actually go ahead and start talking about all of the other uh, normie servants, I guess we could call them. So starting off with Medea Lily, as you guys know, in these tier lists, I'm starting to give them actual letter grades now. So like A minus or A plus or just straight A, like a normal A with no plus or minus. Medea Lily, I'm assigning her actually just a plain C ranking because she's very hard to rank because she's a servant that specifically focuses on getting heals in. So it's a very, very weird niche to have because really nobody else does it. And really in the game, you wouldn't really consider it to be that good, but she actually does that niche so well that it prevents her from being like D tier garbage because she essentially just focuses on keeping the party alive as well as she can because she has a 150% battery that helps her get to her heal on her NP and her NP is absolutely insane with it offering a 4k party wide heal, debuff removal, and slapping 40 to 60% debuff resistance to the entire party, right? Which is absolutely insane. Now I mentioned the 60% because that's overcharge too because she actually does have that 150% battery. And that means if you ever with a starting charge CE of 50%, you actually can reliably just get that overcharge too. And then 60% debuff resistance, you know, slapping that on a servant that's already like say a saber or something that already has like high magical uh, resistance or God forbid you're using like Jean in the team who has like 20% magic resist uh, just built into her kit. It can get absolutely insane with you just not even being able to be debuffed at that point. And then Really just the rest of her kit is just kind of helping people heal and like removing their debuffs and trying to make sure their buffs stay on them with the buff removal resist. It just kind of saves her from being D tier garbage because they really just overemphasized her into healing. And even though it's not the best niche to be in, it doesn't make her complete garbage. If you actually need someone to actually just be a dedicated healer, or maybe you just don't have any better support to use, you're gonna at least get some use out of her because she's going to keep your people alive as best as she can. Really, the only thing she can't protect you from is like a massive NP or if the enemy just crits you down. She can't do anything around that, which is what kind of separates her from some other supports that maybe offer some defense or just hardline survivability and say like a party-wide dodge or party-wide invincibility, stuff like that. But She's not complete D tier garbage by any stretch of the imagination. So that's why I gave her the C ranking. Now, Alice, I actually gave a flat B ranking as well, because Alice is actually a bit stronger than I kind of thought she was going to be. Um, she actually kind of functions as somewhat of a DPS crit uh, arts caster. It's a very interesting kind of niche they put her into, but she has enough of the base pieces going into her skills and like what she kind of does that I think she actually does deserve to be a B tier servant because listen to the things that she has. She has a 50% crit damage buff with decent star weight that mashes very well with her naturally high star weight as a caster and that is just like basically Jolter's crit damage buff, right? It's essentially almost the same exact thing where she's getting 50% crit damage and the decent star weight to help her do that and you know that that's actually a really strong like basis for her being a crit damaging servant. She has the same defensive skill as Tamama, which is obviously very good for skill one, giving her 60% defense, and then the two subsequent turns being 30%. It's not hardline survivability and like an invincibility, but it does keep her around for a bit. She has the 40% debuff resistance, which is supposed to help her not kind of get like stopped or anything because you really can't waste any turns with Alice. Like if she gets stunned or something, it's kind of just game over because you can't let her stop because it's already hard enough for her to get started anyway. Because one of the main things holding her back is that she is an art servant and it's really hard for art servants to be effective crit servants because they don't naturally gen stars. So that's why when we have the servants that are arts that do actually function as crit servants, like say uh, someone like Astraea who can be an arts crit servant who functions really well in that aspect, they really stand out and they shine because it's a very hard thing for them to do. But she's also packing like a 40% battery and debuff removal, which 
you can't slight that like a 40 percent battery is really strong and debuff removal for herself is also very strong right and then she has just a decent NP that reduces the enemy party's defense by 20%, unfortunately doesn't proc first, and then she has a 60% chance to drain their enemy NP. So it's not a bad servant. Like, as you can see, everything here is just, like, kind of good. She's got a lot of very good pieces available to her, but she just needs, like, one or two more buffs to kind of tie it all together. Like, maybe a skill that just gives her access to immediate stars or maybe just a strong arts buff maybe just put those on one skill together like a 30 percent arts buff for three turns and drops 20 stars maybe they could add that to her np something along those lines i think would be really good to help her go forward but she's not bad by any stretch of the imagination currently she just kind of needs some more pieces now in b plus we have helena now Helena kind of stops from being an A tier, and that's, well, kind of the whole point of the plus mechanic that I have going into this. So essentially, if I have a servant with a plus, it means I think they could potentially go higher or just stay at the very high end of their tier. So it means that Helena being a B plus, I think she could go here or like the bottom of A, right? Like I think she can fluctuate. Now I'm comfortable keeping her at B plus because she's a strong support that just is kind of missing a little bit of oomph left to her, right? She's just missing maybe like one more skill buff. She's right on the cusp of being an extremely strong support type servant, but she's just lacking something. She's just missing a piece because already when it comes to her being a support type servant, she's giving 20% NP to the party. She's giving an Omni card buff of 20% to the entire party. She drops five stars every turn for five turns. And then her NP actually lowers the enemy defense as well to provide more damage for the entire party. She can also do a bit of damage herself because she does have a 50% NP damage buff. It is chance based, but it's an 80% chance. So, you know, four out of five times you are going to get it or just use somebody with buff success rate and then you actually can just guarantee to get it. But she's missing something, right? Like she's missing just one little piece. I don't know if it's just more stars per turn because five is kind of small maybe if they bump that up to 15 and then she gives the party even 30 percent crit damage for three turns i think that could actually complete her as just a solid a tier support type servant but she's just kind of lacking a piece or two right she's just missing a little bit of something to kind of push her up to where i can confidently say no she's just an a tier servant so that's why i'm leaving her right here at b plus but she's still very good don't misunderstand it's just she's kind of missing those pieces right now Next, we have Edison, who I have at C+. I was a little surprised with him, but he's almost like the C-tier version of Helena because he's also doing some pretty interesting things himself. It's just he also lacks pieces, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because he can give an ally 30% defense, reduce their skill cooldown, and overcharge their NP by two stages. He also helps himself get to his NP by giving himself 10% NP every single turn, and he drops 10 stars every turn for 5 turns, which is very strong again, that's very good for a support type servant, and his NP actually seals all enemy NPs and skills for one turn as well. So it's like, he has a lot of really good pieces available to him, but he has like almost no cohesion between them. So some things I would like to see him get is maybe like a targetable battery that he could give to somebody, maybe some specialization into being able to get crit buffs for himself or the entire party. Stuff along those lines to kind of combine with the stuff he's already doing could be really, really strong. Or maybe even give him like a targetable NP gain buff and make it really high to kind of compound with the other stuff that he's doing. But he's just lacking cohesion between the stuff that he's doing and that's kind of why i say he's like the c plus version of helena because while helena is in a much better spot they're both very similar which is kind of funny considering the lore reasons that you know helena and edison are linked together i kind of think it's a little funny that they're both kind of in the same spot didn't plan for that at all trust me <laughs> you know i look i'm just spitting the facts as they are but yeah edison sitting at c plus um in the same position as his friend helena over there now should be pretty obvious uh sans is a very comfortable a tier servant I mean, despite being a year one servant that really hasn't received very many buffs, she was just completely built different for a year one servant, and she holds up very, very well to this day. 
because this servant is just <laughs> absolutely nutty. First and foremost, she's got that crazy 80% battery. She gives herself a 20% NP damage buff for one turn and the party 20% attack for three turns. So keep in mind for that turn, she has a 20% NP damage buff multiplying into a 20% attack buff, which is very strong. It helps her damage be a bit more consistent because one of the problems with Sanzo is that after you popped her first skill, you would lose the NP damage buff and then her damage would fall off a bit but now she at least still will have that 20% attack buff and help her stay a bit more consistent. She has a taunt that also gives her damage reduction, which makes her very strong as a utility servant and compounding on that utility, she gives the entire party 30% NP gain, star gen, and one turn of debuff immunity. And the NP gain and star gen, by the way, lasts for three turns. So it compounds on her ability to be a good utility based servant on top of her being a strong DPS. And the two just kind of fit very well into one another because, you know, she's going to be smacking people anyway, but it's like all of her skills are also tailored to helping out the entire party. It just kind of works out really well. If really I could just ask for one thing, I don't know, maybe just drop stars on her first skill. I really don't know. There's not a whole lot that I could really ask for for this servant. Like I would say try to give her like maybe a crit niche, but she really doesn't need it because her whole niche is smack people with the NP and then support the party with her other skills, which she already does very effectively. Um, and then as a little bonus, her NP pierces defense. I really don't know why this is the only thing it really does. Considering she smacked down the walls of Camelot, she should at least have pierce invincibility. Um, although if they wanted to say she pierces solemn defense, you know, if she wants to be the first person that does that, because all I'm saying, walls of Camelot, solemn defense, pretty similar to me. And if they want to give that to Sanzo, I mean, I'm not going to complain. So Sanzo sitting pretty at A tier. Nito Chris s tier nido chris is absolutely crazy if you've used nido chris you know she's insanely good at when it comes to being a farming servant but she's also very good when it comes to challenge quest she has a very diverse set of skills and she functions really good at being a like kind of like a trash mob clear which again is very good in farming and in challenge quests it's just she's able to do both very very well she's got a 120 percent battery so that's already immediately crazy because it gives her immediate access to her np with her first skill and her NP's overcharge effect, she actually has that really good insta-kill niche, and that's what makes her a really good trash man, is that she's able to pretty much guarantee not only kill bronze uh, enemies, but also silver enemies, especially if you want to start specking into things like Demonic Bodhisattva that also gives her that two stages of overcharge for that first NP to pretty much just guarantee just annihilate any silver enemies. It makes her really effective at being that trash man, but then they also gave her like a 20% arts card buff that lasts for three turns as a more recent buff, and this not only kind of helps her damage out a little bit just in case you don't kill some of those trash enemies, you might be able to do it now, but it also helps out her NP gain of her arts cards if, you know, your battery's down and you want to make the most of said arts cards. So it's just a very solid buff overall. And then to help her out in challenge quests, they gave her a guts and a debuff cleanse as her third skill. And so it just completely co uh, completes the package for Nido Chris. She's just overall an absolutely godly unit because again, specializing in killing trash mobs I mean, since they're like 95% of the game, it's just inherently going to be very, very good. But then she's also helped out by things by the insta-kill niche and that 120% battery. Then we have our girl Da Vinci over here, who I actually have at A- minus right now. And that's because I think she's still lacking maybe one more buff. I think DW has one more thing up their sleeve to give to Da Vinci to really propel her into being a high A tier servant or an S tier servant, but let's talk about what she has right now. She's already got a very solid foundation going for her with things like a 50% battery, the ability to pierce defense and invincibility when it comes to her NP and third skill. The fact that she refunds 10% NP every turn for three turns, has a guts to keep her alive with 30% defense to kind of help her out in more difficult content. And then just the fact that she has a 30% NP damage buff for one turn, but her NP also gives her an additional 30%. So if you missed the one on the skill because it's like chance based, you could still get it on her NP or combine both of them to do absolutely massive damage. And then she also gives the entire party 20% arts for three turns. You know, 
she has a lot of that good stuff going for her and the fact that she's very good in challenge quests with things like the guts like the pierce invincibility like the pierce defense it makes her very strong against bosses and then the fact that she can multiply her arts buff into her np damage buff to do big boy damage and that she has a 50 percent battery it just feels like a lot of these skills either being on you know one turn cooldowns or like kind of being more chance based kind of makes it feel like she's lacking something a bit or like the fact on skill three the fact that she only drops like a few stars for herself it's like why don't we just compound on that a little bit why don't we just make it a bit more stars and just give her 100 percent crit damage for one turn because if you want da vinci to kind of have this whole niche of well a lot of her effects are really good but maybe they're only on like a one turn thing Let's just go all the way. Let's just give her that 100% crit buff and drop herself like 20 stars. She's already a caster, so her star weight naturally is already pretty decent. So let's just compound on that. That's why I have her at A minus, but I can kind of see the argument for her just being a flat A tier as well, like without the minus. I can see that argument as well, but I'm going to keep her at A minus for now. So then we drop all the way back down to C tier with Marie. Marie is just unfortunately a year one summer servant and as you guys know they really don't buff these year one summer servants at all they just don't touch them for whatever reason so she's kind of stuck as a servant without direction because she has a good charisma for year one at 19.5 percent that's pretty based for year one when year one had just charismas all over the place of like nine percent over here and 21 percent over there and 17 percent over there the fact that she got stuck with 19.5 is very good she gives like 10 stars for three turns. So you're like, okay, maybe she's a support, but then she has three hit invincibility that's not on a timer, kind of like the Rider version. So it gives her good survivability, but then her NP then goes back to giving 20% crit on the NP, which 20% crit to the entire party. I mean, it's nice. It's just not really anything because 20%, I mean, I'd rather you just not give it to me and you just gave the entire party, I don't know, a 20% buster buff or an arts buff or a quick buff or just something else, right? Just anything else. Then just because 20% crit damage really doesn't amount to a whole lot. So she's just really a servant without direction. And it's really unfortunate because she's probably not going to get buffed anytime soon because they really just don't want to touch any of the summer one servants. I hope they do sometime soon because a lot of those summer one servants are definitely starting to show their age and could use a little bit of love. So she's going to be sitting in the C tier. Uh, then we jump all the way back up to S tier because literally well, anything you could say about Sanzo, I mean, Illy is kind of the more perfected version of that. Sure, she doesn't have the 80% battery, but the 50% battery is still more than good enough combined with the fact that she has 28% NP gain on a skill and then an additional 20% on her NP and she has a passive 3% she refunds every turn. She's pretty much overclocked to getting her NP at this point with a fat battery, solid NP gain through two methods and refund every turn. It just makes her super solid. She has a big boy mana burst, but even if that runs out, she gets it back on her NP. The only real downside to this servant is that whenever you fire her NP for three turns, uh, she does lower her attack by 10%. So technically, you're still at a net positive when you fire her NP because even without the mana burst, you get a 20% uh, buster uh, buff for on her NP, right? On her overcharge. And then that lowers it by 10%. You still at least have a 10% buff, quote unquote. But, you know, if you try to fire it like two turns in a row, you know, you can start kind of getting to a point where the attack downs are going to start getting... Uh, larger than the buster buff you're getting so either a just bring like debuff cleanse or something or use her own debuff immunity skill to try to get around that but really it's not something that you really got to worry about all that much and her slapping herself with a 10 percent attack down is pretty fine considering that this is the amount of damage she's capable of outputting i think they were just like yeah this servant hits a little bit too hard so she's definitely an s tier servant if she didn't have the battery she'd probably be flopping around in like B or A tier, honestly. That 50% battery just completely saved this servant. Moving on to my boy Caskill, also a B plus servant because he's kind of like our girl Helena over here in that he's a very solid art support type servant. He's a bit more direction, right? Where Helena is more of a just baby waver essentially in that she's kind of just a general support. Caskill is an art support, but he's just missing like bonus effects on things because he gives just very good generic buffs but they don't really have like secondary effects like for instance he has the gill charisma where he gives 21 percent attack to the entire party for three turns 
but that's all it does. He gives 100% starge into the entire party for three turns, which is insane, but you don't really get to capitalize on that unless you fire his NP, and that's a little slow. Whereas, like, other support type servants, like, say, Waver, give you the buffs, and that's all right there. Like, everything that you could want for your servant is just immediately given to you, whereas Caskill, it takes a bit more prep and setup, and it's just a bit too slow, right? So, they probably need to give him like a crit damage buff to the entire party on that skill. Maybe have him do like star refund on his charisma, something like that to kind of just speed the process up along. His third skill gives a 30% party wide arts buff, which is very solid, obviously. And then as I was saying, his NP pretty much gives you defense and crit damage. It's just a little slow because you don't want to have to wait to get the NP to then kind of complete your support type setup. So just a few more buffs to maybe speed up the way that he works a little bit so he's not left behind. He's got a solid foundation, just needs a few buffs here and there and he'll be absolutely fine. Should also note that his NP basically functions as a star bomb because it has 80 million hits after he's buffing his Stargen by 100%. That's absolutely crazy. Um, then we have Shahrazad, also in A- minus tier. She's a bit of a weird servant to kind of <laughs> determine for me because she's pretty good when it comes to actually looping her NP, which is surprising. You can use her as an arts looper, but then everything else she does is a little weird. I mean, nothing here is bad. Like if I just kind of read off some of these effects, like she's got a 30% battery, that's good. You know, she gives a 30% arts buff to herself, but it only lasts for one turn, which is a little odd because typically when you see a 30% buff, it typically lasts for three turns and it's the 50% that only lasts for one turn, so that's a little odd for her. She has an AoE charm, but it's only applicable to males, which is a little odd. She has a 40% defense buff, but it only lasts for two turns, and two turns is a bit of an awkward uh, turn limit for her. So the 40% defense, I'm not saying that's bad, it's just a little awkward. She gives the entire party guts, which is obviously very good. It's one of her shining moments for me personally. And then if you're fighting a king, you neuter their attack by 50%, and then she also slams them with 230% special damage mod against them, which is pretty unique because usually damage mods start at 150%, but hers starts at 200 to 300%. So it does make her very effective against kings, which, you know, you do encounter with a little bit of regularity. So it's, a, she's a bit of an odd servant, right? With like some of her effects, like some of them are a little weird, like the drain that she has for NP, I don't know why it's single target. You would think maybe it should have just been an AoE drain, but I don't really know. Like, she's just a little weird. Like, definitely usable. Like, she's in A-, minus, so she's clearly not trash, but you guys kind of get where I'm going with this one. Like, the effects here are just a little wonky. Not bad, just wonky. Um, then we have Nero Caster, which is a bit of a change, right? Because Nero Caster, I think, is just a solid A-tier servant. Now, She's definitely propped up a lot, and she was given a lot of value when Koyan Skaya came out because Nero Caster has a big, absolute, massive 50% battery. Which, if you don't know anything about the Koyan Skaya meta, a 50% battery is absolutely killer, and it pretty much helps those servants be completely relevant in that meta. So, having a 50% battery is pretty much carrying her right now in the Koyan Skaya meta, but she is able to do pretty decent damage. It's kind of a um, bit of a misconception that she doesn't do any damage, but she, she her damage is not bad. 23k right here, as you can see at NP1, is not bad at all whatsoever. It's not some of the other Buster Servants that go absolute ham taro, but it's enough to get the farming done, and that's all that we care about at the end of the day. So, she's got that. She's got decent uh, tools if you want to use her in a challenge quest. She has like 30% attack and defense that both last for three turns, a targetable guts with an absolutely massive 50% attack, but that also lasts for three turns. And then her NP itself pierces invincibility and gives her an additional 20% NP damage buff. So you have potentially this massive 80% attack multiplying into 20% NP damage, which does allow her to do some pretty decent damage herself. So really kind of carried by the Koyan Skaya meta thing. Not really going to mention her ability to get NP gain because you need to be under 50% HP to get that. And if you are getting that, you're probably going to die soon, so it's probably not a good thing if you're getting that buff. It means Nero's about to get blown up, take care of her a bit better, but yeah, pretty good servant. Just, I don't know, I would honestly like to see her get, like, one more buff. And I, I know I'm saying that with a lot of these servants, but if they're in, like, the A tier or lower, they're probably, like, one or two buffs away from being a crazy A plus to S tier servant. So, kind of want to see one more thing for Nero Caster, because... You know, I'm a big Nero fan, no spoilers here, you know, and I'd like to see her be a bit better, you know? That there's just nothing else to it. Then we have our girl Cersei, also a B plus servant. Uh she's missing just 
again, I know I keep saying this, but she's just missing like direction. Like it's not like she's missing a buff, but she's kind of missing a direction in which she wants to go. I feel like Cersei could easily go into this very effective lockdown single target servant, right? Like kind of what they wanted to do with say uh, Ryder Murasaki, where Ryder Murasaki is very effective at locking down one opponent that she's fighting. I feel like they could easily do that with Cersei. They just need to give her like maybe a few buffs that are you know, like skill seals, NP seals, stuff like that, because they've already kind of got her going in that direction. She's got a 120% battery, which means she has immediate access to her NP, and her NP is very good because it has a essentially what is a stun because she turns the enemy into a pig and they basically can't do anything for that turn. So it's basically a guaranteed stun if you want to look at it that way. And then it also removes their offensive buff. So again, kind of what I'm talking about her being a lockdown type servant. I think that stuff is very good. Just maybe give her some stuff that also seals like skills and NP on some of her skills, on her own skills. And I think it'll make her a bit better because all she's really doing right now with her skills is that she's lowering the enemy's defense by 20% for three turns, which is decent. It's going to give her a bit more damage, but I want to see more of that lockdown stuff. Uh, then she also gives the entire party a decent 50% star gen buff and a debuff cleanse, which the debuff cleanse is obviously very good. I'm not going to harp on that. Uh, see, that's why I'm saying like she's got pieces there where like her NP is good, 120% battery, party debuff cleanse, but 50% star gen is like not bad, but not exceptionally good. I'd like to see her get more lockdown type skills, like maybe lowering the enemy's buster resistance, right? To kind of compound her own damage and help the party out. And then maybe an NP and skill seal on like skill, I don't know, two or one or something like that. I don't know. Just slap it somewhere, give it to her. Then we have Sheba and uh, Sheba was actually a bit worse than I thought going into this video. I actually have her at B minus. She is definitely a servant super suffering from lack of direction and low cooldowns right and not like not in the fact that her skill cooldowns are low just the fact that she really doesn't have the best long lasting skills and i kind of see what they're going for it but they've kind of shot her in the foot with some of the things that they gave her so first and foremost she has a 17.5 percent charisma which in 2020 is definitely lacking that is not modernized I want to see that get bumped up to a 20% and I want an additional effect on that. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's 50% crit damage for herself because her second skill gives her 100% crit damage for a turn. I understand you can't give her 100% crit damage for three turns, but let's give her a way to kind of subvert that by giving her, you know, 50% for three turns on skill one. Let's just, I don't know, help her out a little bit because being a servant that pops off insanely for one turn is just not as good anymore and so even though for that one turn she has 100 percent crit damage and invincibility pierce that's not very good because then for the next four turns you ain't got jack diddly squat right and then you're just kind of sitting there looking like a potato right and we don't want to be looking like potatoes we want to be popping off for as consistently as we possibly can right because these bosses ain't going to be sitting around looking like potatoes. They're going to be smacking us in the face with their big meaty claws, right? And we, we ain't got time for that. So while skill two is very good, she needs other things to kind of subvert it. So when that skill is down, she can still do things. And the fact that she only gives a 20% party-wide arts and buster for three turns, that was better when she came out. But at this point, it's kind of falling off as like 20% for just both of those when she's not really doing anything else to compound alongside those really is not doing a whole lot. And then even her NP that lowers the enemy's attack and defense by 10% doesn't even proc first to give her additional damage. So Sheba is definitely a servant. I, I'm not going to slap her into C tier because she does have good things going for her. Like the fact that she has some party support and the ability to buff their attack and their arts and buster cards and she can look really good at least for that turn where she has the 100% crit damage and the pierce invincibility but you gotta give me more Sheba. i'm gonna need to see a lot more in the future and that's why she's stuck at b minus anastasia on the other hand solid a tier servant right basically just what i would consider to be a slightly better version of these two because she's a little less wonky right she's got a little bit better things going for her um, she has the 50% battery, pierces invincibility, and as opposed to Shahrazad, who for, again, whatever reason, only had a 30% arts buff for one turn, she's got a 50% arts buff for one turn, so that at least makes some sense. And then she also smacks the enemy with a 100% debuff resist for one turn, so things like her stun will actually stick on the enemy, right? 
then she kind of has like a nega charisma if you want to call it that because she buffs the entire party's attack by 20 percent for three turns and then lowers the enemy party's attack by 20 percent for three turns as well which is pretty insane right it's really good because you're getting that bonus of getting her an attack buff and an arts buff and then buffing the damage of everybody else and then you're also getting the benefit of everybody being a little bit more tanky then her NP also seals the enemy skills, which again, very strong. And it does lower their defense by 20%, but unfortunately does not proc first. So again, solid A tier servant. I think she's a little bit better than Scheherazade. Da Vinci, again, I think you can argue is maybe an A tier alongside um, Anastasia. I'm fine with her being A minus or A either way. Uh, the more that I think about it, I kind of want her to be A tier. So, you know, take that for what you will. But yeah, pretty relative with those two. Anastasia is not bad at all whatsoever. <sighs> then we have Miyu. What a weird, wonky servant. Literally, this is all you got to do for Miyu. Just make skill one and skill two targetable. Boom. You just made yourself an insane servant. Because if you look at Miyu's NP, her NP is insane. It gives the party 10% uh, NP every turn, 10% attack every turn, HP, stars, and then she also gives a targetable 30% battery that comes with buff success rate. The problem is that skill one is a 30% arts buff and three hits of 30% crit damage, but it's for herself. You can't target that on somebody, which is weird because Miyu is supposed to be a support type servant. She herself really isn't supposed to be the DPS, but they kind of want her to be the DPS. It's very odd. Make that targetable. It helps her out a lot. She also gives herself a guts and one instance of debuff immunity, again, make that targetable, and she becomes an insanely good uh, either pump and dump type of support type servant, or just a good sub art support type servant, because then you know she's giving 30%, a little bit of crit damage, can give him guts, refunds NP every single turn, drop stars, like it's just doing a lot of useful things, and they took out stuff like the demerits, where you like, uh, she loses HP whenever she fires her NP, they took that stuff out, so really, that saved her from being any lower than B minus, but she's definitely going to need a little bit of help going into the future. And I think making skill one and two targetable definitely helps her out in those avenues. Then we have Murasaki. That's a solid A plus servant right there. I've definitely changed my tune a bit on Murasaki because when she originally came out, I was like, oh, this might be like a solid like B plus, maybe A minus servant. But after using her a bit more, I've definitely come around on her and I've kind of come to respect what she's able to do. One of the major things that I think is super insane with Murasaki is the fact that her NP smacks the entire enemy party with buff block, not for one hit like people like Jolter, right? Where they only can use it uh, to neg one debuff or buff that the enemy party wants to do, but it lasts for the entire turn. So literally with the ability of Murasaki being able to loop her NP, you can essentially get into a state where the enemy party is never allowed to buff themselves. And that is insane because i know we've all been fighting in challenge quests where the enemies you know they start getting their buffs they start getting out of hand and things get really difficult well with murasaki you really never have that issue because you can start getting into a loop where they're not allowed to buff themselves and that is absolutely insane and then on top of that, you know, she has other good things going for her, like the fact that she gives the entire party three hits of damage cut, an instance of debuff immunity, 100% buff removal, like she gives those pretty good utility things to the entire party. She herself just obliterates demonic enemies. So if you run into any demonic enemy, which is fairly common, you just absolutely just throw them into the next dimension with her NP. She has a 30% battery herself which means that she can actually more effectively get into her NP if you're kind of struggling to get to it. Um, and then she also lowers all enemies defense by 30% as well to just give herself even more damage alongside a 20% NP damage buff. So Murasaki is definitely very good. It's not like she's hitting like a feather either. Like she is doing pretty decent damage when you can get the demonic buff buff over here with, you know, that's pretty good if you can get that off. I wouldn't try to use her too much without it because as you can see, 19k right there is not that great. But as I'm saying, demonic is a pretty common buff. So, or not buff, but common type that you'll fight. So you bring her to those fights, you pretty much lock them out of being able to use any of their skills and it makes her look pretty dang good. Uh, then finally, we have Miss Crane over here. Not finally, but close to finally. We have Miss Crane going in S tier, which this is a servant that I'm not sure people actually know what she does. Um, I don't know if people actually know that Miss Crane even exists. Um, we have this really crazy pump and dump servant right here. Like she's 
the best pump and dump servant actually in the game where if you don't know what that means it literally means she comes in drops insane buffs and then pieces out right she's very insane for that because this is basically what she dumps onto the party before she leaves so she gives the two party members aside from herself invincibility for a turn 100 percent star gen for three turns if they're costume servants, she drops 10 stars per costume servant, which is very important because if they are costume servants, that means she'll drop 20 stars and she can immediately fire her NP because her NP requires you to have 20 stars on the field but doesn't have you consume them, so that's very important. She has 100% battery, so she fills that role very well in that she can come in there, immediately pop a 100% battery, and then get all of these buffs, right? Because that's what makes her insanely good. She's a three turn taunt if you're not able to fire the NP immediately or you don't want to fire it immediately. Then she gives one ally pretty decent star weight, 50% crit damage for three turns, makes them immune to insta kills, which is a bit better if you're doing like Nero Quest or Gil Fest. So it's not really important in like standard farming, but it is there, I guess. And then the main important thing is that you have the person you want to get all the mega buffs in slot one because she gives the servant in slot one 20% attack. 30% NP damage, which remember those multiply into each other. That's not a 50% buff. That's not 20 plus 30. That is 20 multiplying into that 30% NP damage buff. And then she also gives them at least a 30% battery depending on overcharge. And then she dips to the back of the party. And that's what makes her so insane. She drops just so many generically good buffs. Because remember, nothing there was type specific, which means you can use her in absolutely any party that you want. She comes in there, just drops all of the buffs, and then just wins, right? And then the th way that you can kind of get around um, not having the costume servants to get the immediate 20 stars is things like Golden Catches a Carp, which is a free-to-play CE, by the way, which I know if you're not a long-time player, you might not have, but do keep in mind, a lot of those older things, DW's being very good about, like, bringing them back, so I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, the event gets a rerun and you're able to get Golden Catches a Carp, or it ends up in, like, the Mana Prism Shop or something like that, so there are other CEs as well that immediately drop 20 stars, but I believe they're all gotcha CEs as well, but... Yeah, there's ways to get around it if you just can't be bothered to use costume servants or maybe it doesn't fit into your party. But yeah, she's absolutely crazy insane. Uh, again, I feel like people don't know that she actually exists. So, you know, hopefully this gives her a little bit of recognition. Um, next, we have Corday. Corday, I consider to be a very strong single target servant in general. So uh, I definitely think she earns her spot at being A+. Plus. I mean, just listen to some of the things she's doing. She's giving herself a 30% arts buff for three turns buffing the entire party's NP damage by 20% for three turns. That also means that she has her own 30% arts buff multiplying into a 20% NP damage buff, so her damage is decent. She drops, she drops 10 stars every turn for three turns to kind of help out the party, gives the entire party one hit of dodge, which is very good to getting out of a sticky situation. She inflicts confusion on the entire enemy party, which if you didn't know, that basically is kind of like terror where terror every turn for three turns you have a chance to stun the enemy party members this is like that except it seals their skills you might be like oh well that's not all that good well her np not only drops 20 stars but deals big boy damage against skill sealed enemies and then she also herself has a 30 percent battery that also has another 30 percent that's targetable so you know you could just give all of that to corday or you could just you know dump that on somebody else and split the level around you know you could give 30% to herself and 30% to another buffer on the team that can then, you know, give her buffs on their NP or something like that. It just makes her very good when it comes to being a DPS servant and also like a utility servant. Honestly, if you think about it, she's almost like the modern arts version of Sanzo because they're very similar in that they're both DPS servants that can get to their NP pretty quickly and they also both offer a lot of things for the party as well. It's just... Corday's a bit more modern, and Sanzo probably needs, like, maybe one more buff. I don't really know what they would want to give her. Maybe a special damage mod. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but I just see her as, like, the modern arts day version of someone like Sanzo. And, I mean, that's why she's an A-plus tier. She's absolutely insane. And then you have Izumo, who I am pretty confident in putting an S tier as well. Absolutely blown away by this servant. I mean, if we come up here, she's one of the highest damaging servants, even without her uh, damage mod over here. And then if you're able to start getting her damage mod and things, where did my stuff go? Okay, well, I guess we're not looking at it today. I guess, I guess we're not looking at it. But, but if you're able to get her damage mod and stuff off, she absolutely hits like a truck. Again, like Murasaki, she has an, uh, an NP damage buff against 
demonic enemy, so she absolutely just obliterates them with her NP. But then she just does a whole bunch of crazy stuff for herself as well by giving herself a 30% quicken buster buff for three turns, two hits of evasion, big star weight, and 100% crit damage for one turn. But then while I might have criticized someone like Sheba for that, Izumo kind of has a way around that and that she gets the star weight and the 100% crit damage so she gets all of the crits for herself that turn then slams the enemy with big crits and then any enemy she crits for that turn gets their defense lowered by 10% for three turns so it's absolutely insane because then it, it like sets you up for the following turns where it's like the crit damage has worn off but then you lowered their defense so now you actually get even more damage on top of that so she kind of gets around that again that's kind of like something that i would like to see shiba get to get around the issue she has she also has the ability to reduce an ally's skill cooldown by one that's just a nice little bonus effect that she has also comes with a 50 percent battery and she could drop 15 stars for herself on skill three which makes skill two a bit more consistent so i have absolutely no problem putting her in the s tier so yeah when it comes to uh gold casters there's really nobody that i consider d tier garbage there's nobody that i would really slide in here because even someone like marie antoinette as you know unguided as she is she's still at least giving decent buffs to the party and has decent survivability worth herself so i really can't put her in d tier if you want to put her in d tier to make yourself feel better that's absolutely fine i just don't see her as being absolutely that gutter trash i think she does at least have some marginal viability but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments down below let me know what you guys think uh like who are your picks for the top tier gold casters and all that good stuff so you know uh hopefully it doesn't take me five million years to do assassins but dude assassins is probably not gonna be all that pretty because assassins is uh well it's it's definitely a class it has servants in it you know they're um they're they're servants that dw released at one point you know they're they exist so yeah we'll get to that eventually but with all that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day peace late guys